getters. All right. Um, so we're collaborators from SF MoMA, and we're here to talk about making a media wiki for art documentation. We're going to show you what it looks like. Uh, we're going to talk talk about why we made it, who it's for, and we're going to talk about how it fits into our art information ecosystem. But first, we're going to tell you who we are. I'm Lena White, and I'm the head of collections information and access. Um, my name is Martina Heitfeld. I'm the media conservator at SF MoMA, and I'm going to be talking about this a little bit. But um, if you're wondering why is media conservation sort of connected to art documentation or um, or, or CMS within an institution. And um, so the reason for that is that for especially media artworks, they only come together when you install them. So the documentation becomes such a crucial part in preserving these works, which is why I have like an invested interest in this. Oh, hi, I'm Mark Heller, and I'm a digital consultant who's been um, working on the conservation of computer software and hardware-based artworks for the past 10 years. And I think we're first going to start off with Martina's going to introduce the artwork that we're going to use as a case study. So, um, so the artwork that I wanted to <coughs> briefly explain and, and to explain what the issues are that we're facing with, with contemporary art conservation and particularly media conservation is this sound sculpture by Bill Fontana. It's called Sonic Shadows. And it was first installed in 2011. And, um, and just to give you an idea of what that looks like, so the, the artist had these like um, microphones, these like accelerometers, and he placed them in our boiler room, and then had these signals go to these speakers that are that are hitting you, the sounds kind of hitting you as you walk over the bridge, and um, but then we went through a major extension in. Um, 2016 and our boiler room got completely remodeled. So when we reinstalled the work in 2018, the artists could not find the sounds anymore. Like the sounds were no longer there, which I find really interesting. So um, this is one example of how, especially with media arts, we, we have these iterations. Be it, in this case, it is the museum building that changed, but oftentimes it is technology obsolescence that is creating these iterations, or it is even part of the work itself that the works change over time. So these are these are certain informations that we want to capture, and these are certain informations that our current, exi current existing systems having troubles capturing um, in, in these databases. So, but to back up a little bit, uh, is we want to explain what what is it even that we want to capture? What are the different forms of information that we want to capture? This is our little dance. And so, um, like many museums, we generate and we need a lot of information around contemporary art in particular. And so this diagram is our attempt to um, kind of capture in one slide the different kinds of information and documentation that we need and capture uh, and generate for artworks. So we've got it on a spectrum. Um, one side of the spectrum is descriptive information, like physical characteristics or provenance, very descriptive information. Um, on the other side of the um, spectrum is contextual information, like artist interviews, um, critical responses to the artwork. And as Martina noted, we've, had, we've found that our current collections management system and also our digital asset management system do really well on this side of the spectrum, the left side, Leave it to your left. Anyway, descriptive, um, but they don't do so well, or they struggle with presenting and handling contextual information. That's particularly true for very complex works such as sonic shadows, which Martina has suggested need to be installed in order to be fully understood and experienced, and which change over time, and for which collaboration is a key. So I'm just going to advance here. This will probably sound very familiar, but our descriptive and contextual information is scattered around the museum, inside and outside the museum. It may be in different management systems, like our collections management system, digital asset management system. It could be in manual systems. Many departments keep hard copy files um, of the artwork. It could be in our, it most certainly is in our emails, and it most certainly is in our departmental or shared um, network drives. 
It's also, this information is also represented in different um, collection types. So like the art, art collection, and we all have different domain kind of practices. So the art collection, the library collection, and the archive collection. And we've been thinking about inform the information needs of complex works for, for many years, many, many, many years. And we've thought about the qualities that we want in our systems, the qualities that should really help us with descriptive and contextual information. And here are the qualities that we've come up with. These are the qualities that we're looking for in systems like our collections management system. And I'm just gonna highlight three very quickly. Definitely want it to foster collaboration, which we are attempting to model here today for you. Um, we want it to capture knowledge from multiple perspectives, different contexts, different voices. Um, and really <coughs> importantly, key to this conversation is it really needs to address, our systems need to address the information needs of all art forms, like complex works like Sonic Shadows and traditional works like a painting from 1905. So uh, we hadn't really seen too much movement in our collections management system space, for example, toward these qualities. So Martina and Mark, in particular, they posed the question, well, can MediaWiki help us here? Does MediaWiki have these qualities? I'm gonna turn it over to Martina to step us through. Um, sorry, let me Um, this was what you see here is the first design. So we, we, we went through some um, experimentation and, and we, we landed on MediaWiki for, for many reasons. But um, one thing it, it was that it, it allowed us to like fly under the radar a little bit. We had, it was just like in the beginning, it was this kind of rough, I mean rogue experiment. Um, this is what you see here is now the record of Sonic Shadows as we had it in the in the very beginning. Um, this is a this is a documentation of the audio software that was used. Um, I want to say that this is uh, this is all private. This is not public. So we decided to, we we actually never thought of going public with this because this was always meant as an internal tool to capture documentation. Um, Lena mentioned collaborations, especially for media artworks, but I would actually argue for any contemporary works, uh, any works of contemporary art, collaboration is so key because you have so many stakeholders and um, such a variety of artworks. And this platform with, its, with users that can directly input into these records, that was, that was what we were thinking of, like how we wanted to foster collaboration. So what you see here is the first design. This was like playing around with, can that platform even, what can that platform even do? Can it like help with everything that, that we want to accomplish? Um, and what you also see here uh, is that was the first iteration of Sonic Shadows. So um, that was before the boiler room got the model. And then, um, and then, and then all of a sudden we had the boiler room got remodeled and the, the artist couldn't find the sounds anymore and, and he, was, he was going in again, he was finding new sounds. We, the, an audio engineer was remastering or redoing that whole Max MSP software. So all of a sudden we had a second iteration of that work and we wanted to know, okay, how can we reflect that now in, in this platform? And it was not so much, I mean, it was both. At first I was like, okay, this is a, this is a pure question of functionality. And then I realized functionality and design go hand in hand. You cannot really um, divorce them from each other. So what you see here is uh, the second version or the, the, new, the new upgraded design of the media wiki that is now also sort of uh, looking at our as branding. It's, it's looking like that, but um, it also has 
we have a new, it's called skin. We have a new skin that is allowing for these tabs. So if this is now the record of Sonic Shadows. And as you see, there's these tabs that we came up with as a, as a group. Um, we were, we were looking at all the information we had and we were like, okay, how can we sort this in the best way? And so the, the first thing you go to is this like overview tab. And, and we saw this a little bit as a, as a portal. This is where you land. This is where you land when you go into the record. And you wanted that to already um, sort of set you up already in a certain way of like, what is the work that you're gonna look at now? And then going to, going to the second tab, this is now the, the installations that were part of this work. And um, so you see the 2010, 2011 version and the 2018. And if we, if we click on the 2011, you, you, would, you see that same record again that I showed you in the video. Um, and then there's this last tab, and that is sort of now I'm like trying to go back to the, that slide that Lena was showing with the different forms of information. This is this research tab came out of this um, colloquium that we had with, with staff here and, um, in order to try to capture this contextual information on the right side of the bubbly slide um, that, so, that, that so many systems fall short on when you're trying to document these works. So, um, well, for this artwork, this uh, tab is not populated or not very much populated. This, this section of the record would, uh, would sort of capture artist engagement, critical discourse. Um, we even played around with related artworks or a reading list to put in there. So um, this is from my site. And so this is how the Media Wiki looks like today. And now I'm going to hand it over to Mark to um, tell us about the technical evaluation. Well, thank you very much, Martina. <laughs> um, so let's see, some pros and cons, some pragmatic considerations. It's open source, uh, open source in the museum. You'll want to have, um, when you do open source, you want to have active uh, communities. Um, so MediaWiki platform is actively developed by the MediaWiki Foundation. It, it's what runs Wikipedia. So you got a good community behind it. <clears throat> um, open source free, as in puppies. So you you know you're gonna you're responsible for setting up your own server, maintaining it, um, and so uh, that's not too bad with uh, services like Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and DigitalOcean. Um, you can launch a media wiki instance in just a couple clicks. Um, also, partner with IT if it's an option. I know not everyone has a huge IT department that loves Linux, but uh, definitely if it's an option. Um, MediaWiki has wide multimedia support, so video, audio, images, and even more exotic forms such as WebGL or 3D. I found a really nice extension um, where we can have a 3D viewer for some of the 3D models in our collection. Um, and, it, and it's very extensible. There's many extensions available for customizing it to your needs. It's a familiar interface. It's what runs Wikipedia, so the, the users aren't going to be like, oh, this is really exotic, uh, so, um, you know, familiar. Uh, it's got an API, an application programming interface built in. You don't have to do too much work to do that. That allows you to write new interfaces for it in the language of your choice, um, gives you methods for different access and control uh, and customization. Uh, there's no corporate tech support, really. There's the community, there's the forums. Um, but, uh, you know, in an institution, you're going to want support. So uh, there's consultants out there, also partner with IT to roll your own agreements. Uh, the two ways of editing. There's the traditional way, which is in a, a markup language. It's very easy to learn. Not everyone's going to want to do it. And there's something called the visual editor, which is a WYSIWYG, very familiar, looks like Microsoft Word. Um, uh, the visual editor is fairly new and it works really well, but you know, it's still beta, so it might have some quirks. Just be aware of that. Uh, security, there's two tiers of security considerations. There's not a granular access control system, so you can't give really specific permissions to users. 
um, out of the box, but there are extensions for that. Um, so be aware of that. And then um, we're running the Media Wiki privately in our network, not publicly. It's behind the firewall. Um, you can certainly run a public wiki, and many people do. Just be aware to keep security patches updated and you know um, your firewall rules updated, things like that. Uh, this is kind of a no-brainer. And for us, it's not totally integrated in our, our software ecosystem. Uh, it's not hard to do. We, we just have to think about a universal, unique identifier across records. And that's coming soon as our new collections management system takes a form, which I'm going to now turn it over to Lena White. Thank you, Mark Heller. Um, so we've committed to having uh, a media wiki, the media wiki in our information ecosystem, at least for the foreseeable future, because it does things, just to kind of reiterate some of the things, it really does things for us that we haven't yet seen in, in a collections management system, or a digital asset management system for that matter. Things like handling iterations, things like giving us a way to make contextual records in a really easy, familiar way. So this diagram shows how the media wiki is currently situated within our art information ecosystem. So um, you can see that, or I hope you can see that it's situated adjacent to our collections management system and our digital asset management system. And they're kind of in the darkest or the brightest orange, I don't know, the darkest orange, I guess. That sits our current collections management system. And it's Mark, as Mark suggested, we're currently, we're in the last leg of hunting for the new collections management system. And so there's gonna be a change in the name that's in that block. And so we are anticipating making new integrations, certainly with, and certainly new linkages between the collections management system, the digital asset management system, and the wiki. So I'm gonna turn it over to Martina now. So to, to circle back to these objectives that we showed, that we showed earlier, um, we noticed that the, or we're, we're happy to report that the media wiki is checking off a lot of these boxes. And, um, and we also can report that we have some really nice internal successes. We have the, for example, we have our media techs really finding um, a platform in this where their information can go and they, they started to really own it, which is great um, because your, your platform or your, your system is only as good as the users that actually use it. So a lot of, if, if people don't want to use it, which is um, I think kind of in there, um, if people don't use it, the information does not get in there and then you're sort of, um, it's, you're not that successful. Um, we, for Sonic Shadows, we were actually, I mean, that's Mark mentioned that, it's a, it's a little hard to sort of share these records externally. Um, but there's some workarounds, and for the Sonic Shadows piece where I said we had an audio engineer who rewrote that Max MSP software, we were able to give him access so he could directly enter the documentation into the record, and that's, that's really cool if you, if you can have the people directly enter and not having it translated through, some, through other people. Um, we were approached by other museums who are interested in developing these systems, so um, because of these characteristics and um, yeah, which which we're you know that that's a great thing. Um, so what's next? So oh, sorry, excuse me. What's next? All right, we're not twenty minutes. Um, <laughs> we're, we're almost done. So as Lena was saying, we're uh, we're having a we're we're gonna we're on the hunt currently for a new CMS, and um, I think a lot of what we learn through that journey with the Media Wiki has informed a lot of the things that we want in the new CMS, and, but we still see those two as kind of like coexisting and we actually want to integrate them together. So we're, um, one of the requirements for the new CMS would be an integration with a platform like this, having this be integrated with our, with our current digital asset management system. Um, but then also, and, and we were just talking about that as before, um, before we started, so one of the things that now we just learned is, is leaked data. And I'm, I'm very curious, and, and I know a lot of people too here in our institution, to sort of bring, there's a lot of information in that wiki that I think we need to sort of connect, not just internally, but also to other institutions. So 
this is a little bit on the horizon and it's brand new, but I wanted to mention that. Um, yeah, and I think that is that is the end of our presentation. Yes. Yeah, we have um, we, we have some time for questions. So I apologize. I'm still not clear if this is public facing or if it's completely internal. It's completely internal. Yeah. Yeah. There's 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 many reasons for that. I mean, I would like it to be like parts of it to be shareable. For example, if a work goes on loan and we can just send a link, or if this institution can just log in and see that record and have the most updated record, and I don't have to go in and create installation instructions for anyone. Um, but if this is public, I know that people are gonna so restrict themselves and censor themselves, and we want people to just go in there and write and not thinking like three times about how they formulated the sentence. So that's one argument. Yeah. Uh, what do you what do you see as the relationship between uh, something like this and uh, an online collection of digital? Um, Great question. In fact, Martina mentioned we had um, a colloquium with staff, but also with an artist, um, Julia Shear, who's well represented um, here. And the question came up about, you know, it, it's similar. It's like, is this public or is this not public? And we've definitely talked about exposing parts of it, but we just haven't got there. There's certainly a lot of pieces in here that I think would be really interesting. For, I mean, a clear example here is Martina has created, um, I'll call them viewing copies for the artworks, and that's something that we're currently not showing on our in our online collection. That's like one little piece of it. But I guess the answer, just um, kind of wrapping it up, is that it's definitely been asked, and I think there is uh, there, there's conceivably different views into the wiki, right, that you would want to expose for different in different for different reasons, like you're loaning something or you want to share. Uh, more of the story online. I have a question for Martina. Martina, <laughs> can you talk about what gets an article? Like what what artworks, what rises to the occasion here? Um, <coughs> so so we call it the Ethic Woman Media Wiki, and we started with the media artworks, but just because they were more challenging than than other works. Um, We've we've now we we have some experimentation with with because this is actually a platform that can be really applicable to any any form of contemporary artwork and so we've we've went, ventured into that and we've experimented with that as well um, but there there is no there's no system to it of what gets into the media wiki it's it's more like what are the works that we're currently working on where we're currently gathering information on that needs a place to go and it's. Really, anybody can create a, a record or a, a, a page in it with a work, and yeah. I apologize. It's probably going to seem like a very silly question. So, all this work is done for this particular media item, or op, you know, however you would call it. And but you have all these different systems. Mm -hmm. So, is does it have to then be entered totally new in some other system, yeah. or? Does that stay with that object, item, media, whatever it is, through everything that you yeah. have? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question, and that's why I was talking about the integration with other systems. Right. So currently, it is not, and right. some of my media techs asked me that same question. They were like, well, do you want me to now put it in here and put it in here? So, so yes, ultimately, we want to get to a place where you just put it into one location and everything syncs up. Mm -hmm. Because each thing has its own idea. Yeah. Oh, sure. At least with the assets. Oh, yeah. So, um, so uh, speaking of the ecosystem, you know, the, we think you know every uh, piece of software does what it does really well, but it doesn't do everything. That's why we have an ecosystem. So, one type of integration we have here is. Originally, we put all the media right on this media wiki server, but now it's connected to our dams, so all the videos 
images are, are becoming linked. Um, and we will have a, a, a unique ID system that's going to tie everything across so we don't have to do multiple data entry. Nobody wants that. And um, so as the um, uh, collection management system comes online, uh, we're going to do that. It's not insurmountable. Um, and because, you know, dual data entry is terrible and mistakes and stuff like that. So, yeah, we don't want that at all. Um, so we're going to do that. And then also with things like um, the Wikidata and Wikibase extension, uh, we can take data that's in the media wiki and feed other channels like our website or things like that. So that's the ultimate goal is to have this nice ecosystem. And um, I, I think the only thing holding up right now is, is this transition with one of the really important core parts of CMS. Right. So, but we're thinking about it, and we're kind of lucky because we, you know, we have that foresight into what we want to do with our other systems. And, and but it, sorry, I think that the work that we did to get there, I think, is setting us up in a really cool position for what's going to come next. And I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think there was there was a lot of like sort of institutional, intellectual lifting that went into getting there, um, which is now done. So whatever comes next, and I think linked data will be a very key to that because then you can connect everything and then you don't have to worry about it anymore where, whether you enter the information because ultimately everything will be linked. But this is, a, this is a bit future talks. And, and so, so Lena was like, is, is, um, is that the platform that we're gonna stick with? And, I, I, if you had asked me half a year ago, I would have said yes, that is it. Um, but now I think this is the platform where we learned a lot, and for now we're gonna stick with it, but maybe if there's a system that's coming up next that will be better, and is still checking off all these boxes, that's, I mean, maybe that's obvious, but this is where we're gonna go. I just want to add, and I hope I didn't get in trouble, this, this, this was kind of a rogue system. We were at the American Institute of Conservation many years ago, and you know, we're having these conversations about how do we document media it's a, it's a huge challenge. And so Martina was like, can we have a wiki? And I was like, yeah, let's do it, because you know, we have these big binders for every work, like paper binders. Yeah, we did not tell you guys the full story of how we got that binder. <laughs> And I was like, sure, and yeah, I'm friends with IT, and I was like, can I just sneak a little Linux server in here for an experiment? <laughs> and this was the experiment, and it's grown, and it's become. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of financial investment, it was open source. Of course, there was human investment, work investment, but I think it really, it, it, you know, it really grew up, and it's, you know, it's moving forward. Yeah. I have a question, and then I think we need to wrap yeah. Um, I wanted to know uh, more about that story you didn't tell us because I ha I, we have a wiki in, in my institution and it's for public use but internal uh, only internal editors.